Hey everybody, it's Cindy here and it's Friday and uh, in the United States anyway, it is Labor Day on Monday. So many of us have a long, longer weekend than normal. So that's exciting. So I'm very fortunate. I have a lot of fun plans this weekend and I'm going to take off early this afternoon. Uh, I often do on Fridays anyway. Who can concentrate in late afternoon on Fridays, right? <laughs> Anyway, this week we I talked about worry on Monday, and then Tuesday, Wednesday, and, and letting go of worry. And then Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, I shared some of my favorite authors, which I'm going to do again today. Uh, one of my favorite authors, Louise Hay, died this week, and I really had a hard time with it. And uh, two years ago, almost to the same day, another self-help pioneer who was around much, much the length that uh, Louise Hay was, died on August 29th, I believe, 2015, although I didn't double check. But um, anyway, Wayne Dyer, Wayne Dyer, another one of my faves, favorites. And he has 40 books, I believe, and incredible gentleman and very intelligent, very loving. He's like a giant teddy bear, intelligent, uh, academic, brilliant, creative, loving person. Anyway, has gobs of work that you could look into, but some of my favorites are Change Your Thoughts, Change Your Life, which speaks for itself, right? And then that's the audiobook. Here's another audiobook, but it's in book book form too, like regular book form. I can see clearly now this was one of his last works and really shares the testimony of his life and how later after events happened he could look back and see how everything was a gift. And so he taught us to imagine that everything was always working out for us no matter whether it felt like, you know, times we would label good times or bad times or tragedies or blessings or whatever that, that in a, with a later perspective, as we look back on things, we can see how there were gifts and treasures and wonderful lessons to be learned and wonderful things that evolved out of our most difficult situations. And that's what this book is a lot about, it's testimony of his whole life with those things happening. My favorite book of his is The Power of Intention, uh, Learning to Co-Create Your World Your Way. I love this book. It's beautiful and it's wonderful. It's a little intense. Um, it's not your average read, quick read. I think he writes sometimes in such a way, at least by this time that he wrote this one, he's pretty deep. So it's more of a study, in my opinion, than it is just a, like a quick read of some nice self-help thoughts. So The Power of Intention, very powerful book, definitely, um, of his. So those are three of my favorites. But like I said, he has like 40, 41 books or something like that that he was involved in, plus gobs of other DVDs and um, other projects he did with other self-help pioneers and so on. Um, so one of the things I wanted to say today is if you saw my video a couple days ago, I was talking about Lu Louise Hay, who had died that day, and I was seriously emotional. I could hardly speak about her. I was so overwhelmed um, with thoughts of her and grief over her, and I never met her. And so this is a phenomenon that people often experience and they're confused by. Or they see someone else like this and they go, what's her deal or what's his deal? Like for those of you who are around my age, I'm 50. And, you know, back when Elvis died, when I was a kid, you know, the whole world grieved. They didn't even want to believe it happened. Like they pretended his ghost was walking around for years because <laughs> I think nobody, nobody wanted to deal with the reality of the king's death. So, um, and then another big time one in my lifetime uh, is Diana Ross, who's the anniversary, or Diana Ross, that's the singer. <laughs> I think she's still alive. Good for you, Diana Ross. Princess Diana, <laughs> it's Friday. Princess Diana, her death was 20 years ago this week, and the world just mourned 
horribly over her death. She died in a car accident and it was just a shock and it was just, you know, and most of us had never met her, but we just felt a connection to her. And Michael Jackson, you know, a lot of people mourned him heavily. Prince wasn't that long ago. Um, and, you know, for self-help people, psychology people, um, inspirational people, you know, Wayne Dyer two years ago, now Louise Hay, I mean, John F. Kennedy, uh, if we get to, to some of you who are even older than us, uh, of course, uh, just and Martin Luther King, you know, it, so there's a phenomenon of when you you've never met someone, but they've had a great impact on your life in some way and you feel a connection to them. And then when something happens to them and they die, you feel actual grief and you may cry or, you know, go through some of the other range of emotions of grief. And I'm just here to tell you that that is a normal kind of grief, but it is labeled a disenfranchised kind of grief. Disenfranchised grief, as I taught in a whole series I did in May of, on grief that people have really loved. So if you're, if you're grieving and you haven't seen that, or you know someone who is, send them to my Facebook fan page and look back in May sometime. There's like a series of four or five days that I do a very thorough look at grief, and it's been very popular, very well received and helpful to people. Anyway, and I talk a little bit about disenfranchised grief, but this is a kind of it. When you, you someone you haven't met, but they've deeply impacted your life, they may be some kind of celebrity or, uh, you know, prominent person that you admire greatly or really supported their work or just felt a really strong connection to. And so you grieve and it's okay to honor your grief over such people and uh, let those feelings flow because they're, they're as real as rain. So um, the best thing to do about any kind of grief is not deny it but especially disenfranchised grief because disenfranchised grief is grief that is not as acknowledged, not as easily acknowledged by our culture as, <clears throat> as kind of regular grief. You know, if your husband dies, your kid dies, your parents die, your grandparents die, your best friend dies, people, people rally around you and understand it. But if you say, yeah, I'm grieving Princess Diana, they might go, really? Why? You didn't even know her. But, but you felt, the thing is, is that you felt impacted by her life or you, you felt a connection to her that was very real. So it's normal. It's okay. And uh, that's what I was experiencing with Louise Hay. And the other thing that I was experiencing, I was explaining this to a friend after that day, was I just respect her so much, her work so much, and how she took the difficult experiences of her life and turned it into helping other people and blessing other people. And I just think that's one of the keys to living a really meaningful life. Whether you do it professionally or personally, um, it doesn't make any difference at all. It's just using our lives to serve other people and give out love, which she, which she, you know, talked about all the time. And so I, I am so proud of her and she challenges me. Her life example challenges me to step it up even more and, uh, you know, be someone who gives out love and shares anything that I have found meaningful or helpful in my life that might, that might help somebody else and hope that the ripple effect is just gets greater and greater and greater. And so I resonate so much with her um, and admire her so much that it, it just really brought up some strong, strong emotion that I just couldn't contain at all. So <laughs> anyway, so um, <clears throat> I guess that's what I wanted to share this week. Um, please look back if you want to know some of my favorite authors. Cheryl Richardson was one I discussed. We say, of course, Wayne Dyer. Oh, and on my website, which is cindydwitmer.com, cindydwitmer, W-H-I-T-M-E-R.com, there's a section called resources, and these are all free, 
And if you click on that, that you'll see something that says my favorite books and authors or something like that. So if you've ever wondered, what does Cindy read? What does Cindy find helpful in her own journey in her life? And what kinds of things does she share with clients and so forth to help them with their lives? There's like my top, my favorite top 20 or 21 books or something like that, that I've listed there as resources for you to have to to know where I come from in a lot of what I share with you those are some of my top 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 favorites so uh, anyway I wish you a wonderful weekend and uh, I hope you're going to do something a lot of fun um, and have some relaxation and turn a good turnaround time until you have to get back at your responsibilities and so forth and uh, I will talk to you sometime next week. Thank you. Bye-bye.